Any opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants personally and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers, Rogers TV, or of Greybrook Securities, Inc. Please consult a professional investment advisor before making investment decisions. Hey, it's Rav. You're watching The Everyday Investor, the hottest real estate investment show in the world. That's right. I said it. I don't care who knows it. We've got a great show lined up. We're going to be talking about how to invest in mortgages, how to lend money out and make significant returns, how to borrow money and uh, pay some interest on it, but invest it and make significant re returns, kind of like being the bank. Um, it is not confusing at all. I mean, it is, unless you have the right teacher, the right expert on the show teaching us how to do that. And we do, we search the nation, we search the world. We found not just one of the most beautiful women out there, but one of the smartest women out there, Carmen Caponero's on the show. I can't wait to start talking to her about how to invest in mortgages, make some money doing that. Uh, remember, get out your uh, pen, your paper, because we're going to uh, jot some things down. We have some kind of protégés, we have some investors, people that uh, Carmen's uh, worked with that are going to come on the show a little later on. Uh, you always want to ask four questions to start whenever you're presented with an investment opportunity. And we're going to go through those uh, questions and get answers to those questions on specific deals throughout this show. The first question is, what is my ROI? What is the return on my investment? The money that I put out, how much am I going to make back? Get that initial money back and how much am I going to get more on that, the profit? When do I get that return? Is it one year, three months, 10 years, four years? It, it matters if somebody says you're making 20% ROI, but it's over five years and really you're only making 4% a year. Uh, the third question we always wanna ask is how much is needed out of my pocket? What is the investment amount? How much money do I have to put forward? And fourth, you want to ask them what is the worst case scenario if they don't have an answer for, for that question, then run real fast. <laughs> uh, but we've got a great show lined up. Uh, we're talking about how to make money investing in mortgages. Carmen, it's so nice to see you. Yes, I uh, you. really want to give you a hug, but this is a professional show, but who cares? Let's, uh, <laughs> it's nice to, uh, nice to see you. Um, yeah. uh, thanks for, uh, for coming out. You spend, uh, you've been spending some time in uh, Florida, your cottage up north. Um, I know that uh, you said for a Rav Show, though, you'll do anything to come on, so thank you for, for doing that. And if I haven't said it before, I, I know you're such a great believer of uh, helping people out. Uh, you know, we call this show The Everyday Investor because it's really for all people watching. Anybody can do this. Uh, and, and so you actually sponsor the show as well. And I thank you so much for that, uh, oh, yeah. you know, for, for doing that and really believing in the concept. And uh, it really means a lot. You know, um, we're going to talk about money and we're going to teach us how to make money and uh, I think Andrew's coming on the show, Andrew Hines is coming on the show uh, right. a little later on. But before we do that, I want to talk about something that's even more important to I know both of us and that's kind of why do we do this. Uh, we were talking the other day and you reminded me how, you know, come 5, 6 o'clock, there is no talk of work in your household. Come Friday at 5 p.m. till Monday at maybe 9 a.m that whole weekend there is no talk of uh, of work because it's really not the most important thing the most important thing for you is your spirituality your faith family yeah. friends so talk a little bit about how real estate investing really ties into that and 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 how we can really find the time to do it i mean you've been doing mm -hmm. this as young as you look you've been doing this for uh you know, over a couple of decades yes, here and yes. uh, did very well but kind of talk to me about the whole holistic point of view of investing well um well for me um, the investing side is my passion. So the real estate investments, buying real estate, it is really like a hobby for me. So even when I'm on the weekends and I'm at the cottage, I'm always cruising around checking out real estate. A very I, lucrative hobby. I, I have this passion. I don't know. It's an obsession with real estate. I want to buy everything I see. Yeah. I obviously have to control myself, but I love it. Yeah. And so that part doesn't really appear to be work for me. But when it comes to my, my family and my home time, I find that it is really critical so that when I come back to work, I am ready to go, I'm fresh, I've had my rest, my family has given, I've given them my time, I go home and I make dinner every single night, pretty much, that's Monday amazing. through Friday, yeah. Saturday, Sunday, we have our family dinners, and that's important to me. So that, there's a balance in everything you do so that when you do go through your week, you feel like you've, you know, you can give it your all, and you feel re revived and refreshed. No, but so. I mean, but what's amazing is you're dealing with, you know, millions and millions of dollars of real estate, uh, not personally just, but for people that work with Pro Funds Mortgages as well. Like yes. you have many clients 
Um, very rare to find, you know, mortgage experts, insurance experts, real estate experts that have a life. I mean, I, I mean, you know, I, I was one of those. I had to recently take a, a three-month sabbatical because of just, you know, stress and anxiety and so on and so forth. And so I commend you, you know, for, for, yeah. for doing that and for teaching it. And Yeah, uh, it takes a lot out of you and you need it. I have to shut down. If I don't buy, let's say, you know, recently it's been really busy. The company's growing leaps and bounds, which is great. We're, we're blessed, we're fortunate for all of that. But I have to really say, stop. Carmen, that's it. So when I get home, I walk in that door, that's it. Yeah. I don't want to hear about it from anybody because our whole family's involved. It's a family business. And that's what I was just going to say. So I that's mean, even more challenging, right? Yeah, yeah I mean, your, yeah. Your, your partner's there, uh, um, your daughter, your son. I mean, do they understand this? Are they Because I'm sure they want to talk shop oh, they got you know, it. after hours. They got it. If they even bring it up, don't go there, don't want to talk about it, that's it no discussion about work yeah that's it don't talk about it and we all respect that in the home and actually everyone appreciates it yeah no 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 so, I, I think that's I think that's amazing so uh, we're gonna take a break here in just a second when we come back uh, let's talk about this whole concept of investing in mortgages it's almost like you coming to me and saying Rav you can be the bank we don't have to necessarily just go to the bank for money they make it hard sometimes mm -hmm. I'm really looking forward to uh, to you teaching us uh, and all the viewers at home how we can make money by lending how we can make money by boring Look you're watching the everyday investor my guest Carmen Caponero is on the show it's gonna be a hot one don't go anywhere we'll continue in just a moment Whenever you're considering to invest in real estate, always ask four questions to start. Number one, what's the return on my investment? Number two, when do I get that return along with the money I put in? Three, what is the minimum cash amount needed? And number four, what is the risk, the worst case scenario? Opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants personally and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers, Rogers TV, or of Graybrook Securities, Inc. Please consult a professional investment advisor before making investment decisions. Hey, it's Rav. Welcome back to The Everyday Investor. Today, we're going to talk about how to make money, how to get a return on investment by investing in mortgages. Carmen Caponero is on the show with us. She's going to teach us how to do that. Uh, Carmen, you are the head honcho, the, the, <laughs> the, the president, the everything, uh, CEO, the uh, brains behind ProFund Mortgages. Um, tell us a little bit about ProFund's mortgages and what it does and how it's kind of uh, is it the liaison? It's the mediator between somebody like Rav who wants to lend out money, somebody like Rav who wants to borrow money. Kind of talk to me a little bit about the process mm -hmm. and the birth of, uh, mm -hmm. of ProFunds. Okay, well, ProFunds has been established now since, oh my goodness, it's been at least 20 years. Yeah. And uh, it started off originally uh, servicing real estate investors. So we would finance real estate investors purchases, income properties, and so on. And over the years, as time... So, so I'm, a, I'm a real estate investor, yeah. and I want to buy this property, you know, wherever. We'll get you a mortgage. And you will get me the financing from that, from a bank, bank or so, pr private... Yeah, so yeah. a brokerage, our brokerage, we will deal with 30, 40, 50 institutions, and yeah. you would only get one credit bureau, and we could, uh, you know, hit every one of these lenders till we get you the best deal possible. And so that's, that's um, the difference between one of the big... Banks, uh, banks yeah. and pro funds. If I go to the bank, then they can only sell me, um, generally speaking, the the bank product. That's right. Um, but if I go to, to uh, someone like pro funds mortgages, I can. Um, I'm available to 40, 50, 60 different lenders. Yes, that what and and it's a wide range. So we. Now, not all brokerages do business like this, but we gear to real estate investors. Yeah. So we can refinance residential homes. We have access to 40, 50 lenders there. We have commercial financing, uh, and I'm talking small little strip plazas to large, large, large projects. Yeah. And then we have uh, money for private, private money for land and, and no, so. I, I think it's. I think that's very, very important. And I know you're saying that's just where you started, um, what you started doing, um, and you still do a, a mm -hmm. that, but I think yeah. it's very important for somebody watching the show to understand understand um, that it matters that you know the, the the people that are helping me to get access to funds are actually investors themselves yes you know I, I, do, I never want to hurt anybody's feelings watching this show 
But if you're a realtor or an insurance broker or an accountant or or anything that I need on my team, but you're not an active investor, mm -hmm. it makes it really hard for me to want to to work with that person because rules are changing so much and you yeah. have to be abreast of it. You may not know all the ins and outs unless you're actively doing it yourself. Yeah, it changes now, that's just regularly. My, that's just my personal yeah. opinion. Yeah. Um, you know, but uh, you're actively investing and so therefore you know. And you we're know. actively acquiring financing. So. The combination of being the investor and also seeking financing, we can bring both sides of the knowledge to the table. So yeah. an average mortgage broker might not be involved in investing or have so much information on that side. So when we work with our investors, we understand how the contract needs to be structured. Yeah. We, we figured the whole thing out from start to finish. But we've also created a real niche in the industry because now, because of the bank criteria being so challenging, we opened up a very large arm to private money. Actually, it's it's become a very large part of our company uh, profile, which is private funding. Yeah. So we do, I'd say 80% of our business is private mortgages. That's and huge. And huge. So we do small individual mortgages, it would be like 25, 50, 100 to a million. Yeah. And then we can do from a million to 50 million. And we can raise that, that type of money. So we actually have our own kind of investor pool that we work with and we can place funding for yeah. anything across the board. So mainly geared to investors and developers. And, 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 I, and I think it's, uh, you know, it's it's anybody can get money maybe for one project not anybody it's still very hard to get money for, for for one little property it's where I want two or three it's where I want an apartment building it's where I want commercial where it's where I want to construct on something to to rehab something you know and, and maybe flip it or whatever the case is that's where I need to be working with you know one person because then you can you know set me up in a way mm -hmm. that you know I can have access to unlimited funds I mean once you you know you said it it's, this is an addictive you know practice this it because is. it's a lot of fun it's it's if you know what you're doing um, even semi it's pretty hard to lose money in real estate yeah. um, you know and so you want to keep going but where we get where I get stuck or where I did get stuck is I have no access to funds anymore yeah. right you only have so much uh, so much you're money. limited yeah, yeah. So, so 20 years here, ago you started that way yeah. and then how did it evolve? What, it what just, happened? Uh, we, our business model grew um, with investors and it just it, it continued to grow and our service was geared to investors and word of mouth and referrals and the company's growing. And what happened is over time, as I was saying earlier, the banks have tightened up so much that you used to be able to get 90, 95% financing to buy up to four units. Yeah. Today you're maxed at 80%. If you don't fit into that perfect little box that the institutions are looking for today, yeah. you're not gonna get the mortgage. So, so when you say 99, so basically what I heard you just say is I would only need 5% down perhaps back in the day, back yes. in the day to yeah. go even buy a fourplex, Yeah. right? Because rather than have four different properties, to have four properties under one roof yeah. with one furnace, that would even be more prudent. You could even get 100% financing. 100% financing. Cash back. And, Everything was available. And today, what do I, I mean? The, the banks want me to have thirty-five percent. Well, basically. thirty-five. If you're and if you're self-employed, if you're a business or an entrepreneur, you are looking at sixty-five percent, maybe seventy-five percent. Yeah. The rates are slightly higher. They've made it so challenging. You can only have so many properties that you own personally. Yeah. And even if you have a company now, they're doing searches to see what mortgages you hold. So it's really become difficult. Actually, yeah. it's, a, it's a side of the business that it's so difficult to finance. I don't even know how uh, other people in the industry do anything or make a living at it anymore because they're yeah. behind all the time. And right? listen, you know, I'm, uh, I'm born in this great uh, country, Kingstown, Kingstown, Ontario. Kingston, Ontario, that's where I'm born, yeah. Sir, John, Sir John A. McDonald. I'm, I'm, uh, very grateful for this country, grateful for this nation, grateful for the stingy banks mm -hmm. that keep us healthy. Yes. But when it comes to my investor hat, yeah. I need money. Yeah. And so therefore, I can't go to the banks. I need to go and, and you get know what? private funds. You can get private money, and who cares about the rates being higher? Yeah. And that's what we're going to bring the, our guest on and discuss exactly that. Like, people, oh my gosh, I can get 2% right now, and i got to pay 10 Are you crazy? I said, are you crazy? Look yeah. at the opportunities you're missing because you're worried about, you know, 8 or 10% in, in interest charges yeah. on something. It's better to have uh, something than yeah. nothing. But most right? people, but, but mo and, 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 you know, most people don't know 
know this, and so let me set, uh, you know, warn the viewers at home uh, uh, that, you know, we're talking about returns of 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 100 percent returns. Yeah. And so, therefore, for me to borrow 100 grand and pay 10, 11, 12 percent is nothing if I'm going to make 80, 90 percent returns, or yep. even if I'm going to make 30 percent return, I borrow that private margin. Money. Yeah. All the time. Um, and then, yep. then also, we can lend that out because somebody's lending that money out. So, you know, the first question that we always ask, uh, Carmen, is what is the return on my investment just as RAV lending out, you know, 25,000, 50,000, 100,000? If I were to lend that money out, and, mm -hmm. and also it doesn't have to be just cash, it can be registered money as well, correct? Correct. So if I were to lend out, you know, $50,000 in my RSPs or, you know, $100,000 TFSA or Lira or RESP, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. What kind of return on my investment on a private deal? Because mm -hmm. I know you're going to come back um, uh, very shortly in a few weeks, and we'll talk about the group deals, the syndicate type mortgages. Yes. But for me to just lend on a private deal, individual mortgage. on an yep. individual, is that what we're calling? Okay, yes. so for me, for Rav to lend out, to make numbers easy, for Rav to lend out a hundred thousand dollars in RSP money to Andrew. Yep. who's coming on later on. Mm -hmm. What can I look for in an investment? What's my it's return? A, there's a wide range and it's also about your risk level and your comfort level. Yeah. Now, and I'm saying risk level because if the higher the loan to the value of the real estate, the higher the the interest rate is. Meaning, if 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 somebody if if that actual product or the 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 subject property, if there's more equity in it, there's less risk. Right. If uh, if there's a, a full mortgage that's pretty close to, then then there's going to be more risk. But then I can ask for more return. Exactly. But always keep in mind. Mortgage investments are about the most secure investment you can get into out there today because you're registered on real estate. Nice. You have a, you have that amount of money you're lending to Andrew. I'm putting my anchor into that land. Nobody can sell it, move it. Without All through my, a lawyer. Yeah. The charge is on the property. He ha if he sells it, you have to be paid. He can't get any kind of financing in front of you yeah. unless you're you're paid. So throw out a range. Throw out a range. So Let's say returns are anywhere from okay. So first mortgages go between seven and twelve percent. So between so, so I can lend out hundred thousand dollars in RSPs, yes. and I can make seven thousand to twelve thousand dollars to go right back into, into that RSP, and pay no tax, yes, uh, annually. Yes. Okay, so that was the second question. And when do I get? You, how long are these terms? Usually? So they're typically one-year terms. One-year term. Okay. And um, we like to keep them short because this way here we can gauge the markets and see just yeah. for extra security for our investors. Yeah. Um, and then second mortgages are anywhere between 12 and 16 percent a year on your money. So explain a little bit that what that means, a second mortgage. So that means like the bank already gave them a mortgage per se or Perhaps. somebody yeah. already gave them a mortgage. Now they need a little more, maybe 50,000 or so, and I would come into a second position. That's right. And I would only and I would do that if I was comfortable because I want to see that there's a little bit of room, wiggle room. If I liked it, then you're saying I can make how much? Anywhere between 12 and 16 percent. 12 and 16 percent. So I put out a hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, and that's this, a year, so annual. Yeah, but that's I put out a hundred thousand dollars and I get sixteen thousand back plus my hundred. Yeah. Sixteen percent. So then you get that money back yeah. and you reinvest the, the whole amount. Now you've got a hundred and sixteen thousand dollars, and you can double your money in no time. I like your style. Yeah, it's yes. amazing. So um, and 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 with cash money. Yeah. I get paid that, I can get that paid monthly, I can get that yeah. paid, I mean, how does it, okay, it depends so, how we structure it? Yeah, or? it depends how we structure it. We have a, an administration, our company has a mortgage administrator. Yeah. So what we do is we will collect the payments and we make payments to our investors. In some cases, we take an interest reserve for the whole year, yeah. which is even additional security. And for the most of our mortgages, I do that because I like to take that. What do you mean comfort. interest reserve? What does that well, mean? let's say, for example, you've got $100,000, the interest rate is 12%. We're yeah. going to hold back $12,000 for the year and you can actually have a choice to take that on the day of closing in advance for the whole term. Oh, so you get I all see. your interest payments up front. When you say closing, you mean when we when finalize the contract, the not the whole yeah. year. Yeah. So I get it up front. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. So therefore. So instead of giving kind of a hundred thousand, I'm kind of really giving eighty-eight thousand, but it's like I'm giving. You're on the ball. Eighty-eight thousand. Yes. That's right. Yeah. I like and, that. And then your ROI goes up. Your return on the investment. It's a little more. You have to think about that a little bit. Yeah. But um, some people like the idea of having their money in their account every month, and they want payments monthly. Some people say, No, I want the money up front, and I'll reinvest that money. Yeah. So he's paying interest 
on his interest payments, yeah. essentially. So it's, it's amazing. And so this is Rav lending this out to Andrew. Mm -hmm. Now, people watching the show, you're wondering, you know, well, why would Andrew want to borrow this money at 8% or 12% or even 16%? In a few minutes, Andrew's going to come on the show and he's going to teach us uh, exactly why he would borrow that money. But I think it's, uh, I think it's brilliant. And what else I, I love, Carmen, is the... Um, you know, which we, we really do need to talk about maybe even later on in the show, is kind of that RSP, um, are, you, are we still doing the exchange program? Yeah, the we've modified program. it. We've modified it slightly. It's ready to go. We're, we're doing a relaunch on it right now, so it's a great idea to talk Yeah, because basically that. my RSPs, I can't buy for myself, yeah. but if I have $100,000 in RSPs and you have $100,000 in RSPs, I can lend you 100000 you can lend me 100000 and it's, it's just not, like we're no, using... It's not a swap. Yeah. This whole thing is a pool of registered funds, and we're going to lend them and borrow it at 5%. Nice. So you may not have an exact partner, but you're going to say to the pool, I'll put this money in, yeah. but now I can borrow at 5% up to 95% of the value. I love it. That's awesome. I love it, and I love you, and I love this show, and I love you viewers at home. You're watching The Everyday Investor. Don't go anywhere. Andrew Hines is going to be on the show, and he's going to tell us why he borrows money at a high interest rate. Watch and see. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Did you know when borrowing private money, the approval process is mainly based on the security in real estate? Unlike the banks, depending largely on income and credit. Any opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants personally and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers, Rogers TV, or of Greybrook Securities, Inc. Please consult a professional investment advisor before making investment decisions. Hey, it's Rob. You're watching The Everyday Investor. Today we're talking about how to make money by lending money, how to make money by borrowing money. That's right. I didn't stutter. How to make money by borrowing money. And right now, Andrew Hines is on the show. Andrew, nice to see you. Nice to see you. Thanks, uh, thanks for being here. And, um, you know, you're not only uh, a rock star gigging around. I hear you lost a couple of band members. Yeah, I lost a couple of band members. Uh, one of them moved away. Uh, and then the, uh, the other one just kind of distance was a little bit of an issue. So we're, we're looking for a rhythm section right now. Nice. You know, if I were to do it all over, I'm 44 years old right now. If I were to go back and do it all over, uh, not that I could, but I would love to be fronting a, uh, a band. You know, you know, Carmen, one of those like sappy 80s kind of yes. journeys, our real speed rig and all that kind of okay, stuff. I would love to have done that yeah. or been a film director. Uh, but, uh, you know, getting to uh, host this show uh, for the beloved viewers is not that bad uh, right, either. So, thing. yeah, so you're cranking that, you're doing uh, th that kind of stuff, and then on the side, we're just making, you know, two, three, four hundred and fifty percent on our money uh, just for fun. Now, people are watching and they won't believe it, so let's uh, go through some numbers if we can so you can teach me what you did. Um, and let's go from the perspective, because, you know, I don't know who you borrowed the money from. Carmen does, because she mm -hmm. set it all up for you. Mm -hmm. But let's just say that Rav lent you the money, right? So how much money, um, well, why don't you walk? What, what do we do? So we bought, a, we bought a property? Yeah, so I bought a, a property in London, uh, paid $210,000 for it. Okay, so hold on one second. So we, we bought a property in London and you paid $210,000 for it, but you live in Toronto. Yes. Yeah, That's so right, so, so, so it's possible to make money and it doesn't have to just be in our backyard. Exactly. Right. Yeah. So this is this is what you did. You had um, and how did you find this? Was it a private sale on Kijiji through a realtor in London? What'd you do? Uh, it was through a realtor in London. Yeah. Um, I used to live in London for a very long time, so I knew that market. I I knew some of the stuff that was going on in an area that I liked. So yeah. I kind of had him looking out, you know, for me to make sure that uh, that if anything came up in that area, that uh, that I'd get a chance to see it. Yeah, and I think that's very important because it's not London that's the big deal. It's the fact that you kind of knew about a bit, a bit of an, an area. I mean, if somebody knows mm -hmm. about you know Aurelia or Hamilton or mm -hmm. Barry or or so you know they know or they know somebody who knows something about that area. They trust a a realtor or an investor out there. Um, you can live, you know, in downtown Toronto, but because you have a little bit of knowledge in a place like London, 
um, you can make a great return on the investment. Mm -hmm. So you bought a place for 210,000, uh, but you didn't pay 210,000 cash, what'd you do? So what I did um, is I have other real estate yeah. and my money was tied up in that real estate so I didn't have the down payment to, to put down on that. So you know, typically if you get a mortgage you gotta put 20% down. 20%, so you um, would probably need just over 40 grand then for this. Yeah, so I didn't have that sitting in cash ready to put down. So, yeah. But what I did have is I had equity in one of my other properties. Okay. Um, so what really appealed to this it appealed to me about this whole thing and knowing Carmen, uh, knowing what, what we can do through ProFunds, um, I knew that there was a way that I could leverage that other property and buy this with no, no money in. So basically what you're saying is, yeah. you know, Carmen knows a guy like Rav, mm -hmm. that you, so how much did you borrow? So at the end of the day, I borrowed um, 185,000 through ProFunds as a second mortgage. 185,000? Yeah. Okay, and how did that break down? What, what did you borrow, like so, down payment, did you put 20% down? So. Yes, there was a there was a portion in there for for down payment. See, this is where it gets complex, Rav, because it wasn't it wasn't as straightforward. That's why I, I, I rely on Carmen and the team there to, to really <laughs> help. And obviously, like I've had a relationship with ProFunds for a long time. Yeah. Work, I've worked as a mortgage agent there, so I knew what was going on. I saw people doing this, and I'm like, okay, I got to get involved. Yeah. Um, so basically, at the beginning. I, I have a first mortgage. I got a first mortgage that was about 168,000. Yeah. And then I got a second mortgage, and ProFunds basically took care of the money for me, they gave me just enough to cover my down payment, yeah. they held the rest in trust, yeah. and they released it to me as I submitted invoices, so as I did People the work. People need to realize though, this yeah. wasn't just a rental property purchase. Yeah. Yeah. The objective of this purchase was to completely renovate it. It was a rehab. And flip. Got it, okay. Right? So, so it's more of a construction loan that yeah. we're working so with So the here. first mortgage you just paid a little interest on or whatever, no big yeah. deal. But then the, the real money where you paid significant interest on, yeah. the, according to the viewers at home perhaps, yes. that Rav lent you was what? The, the, like 40,000, 50,000? How much did uh, so, on the second mortgage? So the second mortgage in total yeah. was $185,000. So, oh, okay. So the math won't add up right now, Rav. It, it's, okay. it's based on the end value. It was based on what I knew it would be worth in the future. So God. I knew this property would be worth over $400,000 when I was done. And ProFunds, based on appraisals, was able to lend me money based on the end value. Okay, so I love it. Yeah. So what was the end value? The end value was uh, 428000 So you turned 210000 and it was what? Four hundred twenty-eight. dollars $28,000. Okay, so that's what we sold it for. And in order to, to do this, you borrowed a total of what you just said, $168,000, so but plus 185 as a second. So plus 185 so as a second. So he had a first mortgage yeah. and then yeah. of private, yeah. and then he also got a second mortgage, which was down payment yeah. plus his construction costs. And he's paying interest on that kind of money. Mm -hmm. yes. yes. So at the end of this whole, to turn 210 to, to, to uh, a purchase price to somebody else buying it for 428, how long did that take? It took me four and a half months. Four and a half months. So to do this. It took you 4.5 months, okay? And how much were you out of pocket for the interest that you paid um, to borrow that money to make this happen? Mm -hmm. So it, it worked out to be uh, between interest and the legal fees associated yep, with getting all your money, costs. all my costs. Gas to get from Toronto to London. Well, not that, you know? I'm purely <laughs> just money borrowing costs, yeah. about $30,000. $30,000, Yeah. that's it? Yes. So you were out of pocket 30k. Yes. Okay? So this is your this is your investment amount yeah. is 30k and how much did you take home on top of the 30k? What was your profit? So I, I took home about 45,000. About $45,000. Yeah. Profit. Profit. Okay, so this is this is what you did here. So you're trying to tell me this is where it kind of gets really confusing, but it's not that confusing. What Andrew did is he borrowed a hundred and some thousand dollars um, on a first, a hundred and some thousand dollars on a second. Mm -hmm. You paid interest, closing yeah. costs, all that out of pocket was thirty thousand yeah. dollars, right? Yes. And 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 I think even before we just said this, you know, somebody could pay that out of pocket, or somebody could use their credit line, um, mm -hmm. you know, to, so then the the return is infinite. But what we did is, uh, Rav, so so that the viewers understand is that when we raised the money, yeah. we incorporated the debt service, which means the mortgage payments that he had to come up with. Yeah. So it didn't cost him anything through the process. It yeah. was all covered by the money we raised. Yeah. And as the work was completed, we would advance 
payments to to Andrew yeah. and he would pay his trades and we would make sure the work was done and then he would say okay we're ready I'm on to the next stage so what happens is with construction financing with private money many people want to go to the banks and get it but I say I never do that because yeah. the amount of red tape and how long it takes you to get your next draw Andrew was able to do this in four and a half months only because of one thing everything happened quickly yeah. private money's fast there's no red tape and all this and people have to go in and double check all your costs and things like this we know our business really well and we have a comfort zone plus his great credit and he had other assets so we're protecting our investors yeah but at the same time assisting investors ex to excel no, no, no. in their endeavors so I, I, I great. Think, I, I think it's great I mean uh, you know it's a little bit more not complicated but there's more steps that you know inside and out yes. in terms of why Andrew didn't have to put anything out of pocket but let's just say he had to put 30,000 out of pocket mm -hmm. he's still making over a hundred percent on his money yes. in four and a half months right yeah and he paid what we would call a premium mm -hmm. for the the money that was borrowed for the first mortgage the second mortgage yeah. what was your interest rate on the first mortgage so the first mortgage was was ten and a half percent and and like Carmen said earlier you know First mortgages, it's it's considered more secure in general. So yeah. people who have an appetite for that, they don't expect to get as high a return. Yeah. So I, I pay ten and a half on the first. Ten and a half percent yeah. on the first mortgage. And that's a number that would that would scare a lot of people in yeah. itself. But then on the second Well, I, especially for the amount, because you said yeah. that first mortgage was what? hundred and what? Hundred and sixty eight thousand. Hundred and sixty eight K. Yeah. So one hundred and sixty eight thousand you borrowed at ten percent. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's right. that's a lot of that's a lot of money. So uh, right there, sixteen thousand eight hundred, uh, you know, to be exact, right? And on the second mortgage, I paid eighteen percent. Eighteen percent, and how much did you borrow? I borrowed one hundred eighty-five. One hundred eighty-five thousand, and you were able to do this. And somebody like Rav mm -hmm. lent Carmen, lent Andrew this money yep. because of what we would just simply call collateral. He had other properties that I saw that if anything were to go belly up, then I could come now and say, okay, well, you know, you owe me some money, which, right. you know, if we structure these things right, doesn't really happen that often. Yeah, you always have the recourse of going back to realize on selling the yeah. properties if you if there is an issue, but the ratios of something like that happening are so, so small. Yeah. So, it, because we do a lot of due diligence on, on everything we do, and when you get into this type of thing, it's a little more challenging, yeah. and, and I'll tell you, Andrew's the best borrower I know because he's he increased the return yeah this this was offered to him at uh, I think 16 percent and he said no I want to give them an extra two because it's a shorter term mortgage so they make enough money on wow. us see we want Win -win. lenders and borrowers to benefit here. Yeah, no, because if, if this know, is that's Rav, the whole part of it. Let's say let's just say the first was I don't know some big trust company or something, right? They lending him 168,000 at 10 percent. But then comes Rav and he says, okay, I'll lend you 185,000 at 18 percent. That's that's what you did. You borrowed 185,000 dollars at 18 percent from somebody like Rav. Right. But you made over a hundred percent in four and a half months. Right. That's the beautiful thing about all this. Well, he actually made forty-five thousand yeah. profit yeah. in four and a half months. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He made it's crazy. He, he made forty-five thousand dollars profit. You do that. I mean, that's the average Canadian salary. I think you know is roughly j yeah. between forty-five and fifty thousand dollars. Yeah. So was this something? This was a bit of a, a rehab, right? You you, you yeah. took a property and you changed. You know, what did you turn it into to make it so beautiful? Did you take a single and change it into a, a duplex or a tri or what did you do? Um, well, I, I was focusing on a on a market for um, purpose built, basically student rentals. So oh. this was already built. Nice. It was already mm -hmm. built. It yeah. just it needed a little bit of reconfiguration. It needed, you know, a new kitchen, yeah. a new bathroom, uh, and then I, I had an addition built on the back of the property to give it that extra space. Nice. So you did um, a great job. And did an investor buy it from you? So an investor, yeah, an mm -hmm. investor bought it because at the end of the day, um, you know, it's cash flow. It is a very very strong cash flow property. Yeah. Uh, with where they can go in and they have the comfort of knowing, hey, I don't have any major maintenance coming up. Those those things were done, yeah. um, and now I can, you know, just proceed. And, and one and of our investors in the company, we put it out there to a few people, yeah. and he saw it and he loved it and bought it right away. So he he did the whole thing, mm -hmm. built it, closed it, built it, and sold it in four and a half months. Wow, that's incredible. Yeah, that's great. Kudos and to you. That was great. You're in your twenties. Yes. Yes. Still no. hanging on to the 20s. <laughs> Still hanging on to the 20s. And the lead singer of a band, but you're looking for what? A bass drum? player and a drummer. A, yes. bass, a yeah. bass player and a drummer. Uh, no, I think this is fantastic. <laughs> is this one, of, I mean, you have other investment properties, but is this, you know, one of the best deals to date that you've done now in terms of, uh, 
you know, in and out, 45,000 in four months? Well, I, I've actually, I, I've never really done the in and out. I've always liked to just get in and stay in. Yeah. Um, but um, this is one of those things where I really like creating. I really like, you know, going in there and, and being that guy that, that can get a little hands-on if I want to. Yeah. Um, and see something that's really not nice turn into something really nice. Yeah. So I enjoyed that. Um, and I, I sort of wanted to turn it into more of an active thing, an income thing. Yeah. Um, so that I could I could do that. So I've worked as a mortgage agent with ProFunds for five years now. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I still do deals, but you know, this is one of those things that I just love doing. So I yeah. wanted to really turn it on. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and no, no, I think it's fantastic. He's Congratulations. On two, right? You're on number two now? Yeah, so I just bought the, the next one. And we did another deal like this. Fantastic. Yeah. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you. Andrew Hines with Carmen Caponero teaching us how to make money, borrowing, lending, don't go anywhere. The Everyday Investor continues in just a moment. If you want to be a private lender, you can use cash or registered funds, RSPs, TFSA, RESP, Lira. Your returns are from 18% to 17% a year and secured on real estate. It is known to be one of the most secure investment vehicles out there. Opinions expressed in this program are those of the participants personally and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers, Rogers TV, or of Graybrook Securities, Inc. Please consult a professional investment advisor before making investment decisions. Hey, it's Rav. You're watching The Everyday Investor, the show about making money investing in real estate for all types of peoples. Um, it's so great to have Andrew Hines on the show here, Carmen. Uh, yeah, smart guy, but you know, as extraordinary as, as he is, and, and more extraordinary, the returns, he's just an everyday guy. Yeah. He's an everyday guy, you're an everyday gal, I'm an everyday bald Indian guy. I mean, that's, <laughs> that's kind of what we, the, the message that we want to get out there yeah. is, this isn't that complicated. You know, it sounds like big numbers. He borrowed $168,000, then he borrowed 185000 and he's paying double-digit returns. And But, you know, just simply, somebody like me could lend Andrew $100,000, mm -hmm. and he would be willing to pay 18% on that mm -hmm. and still make a profit of $45,000. So let's talk a little bit about you know, I mean, the, the the reason was, and we talked about it at the break, where I where I was kind of a little bit stuck on that thirty thousand. He actually didn't put any of his own money in. The more the amount of money that he borrowed. So let's say he borrowed one hundred fifty thousand dollars, or he needed rather one hundred fifty thousand dollars, and he was going to pay interest on one hundred fifty thousand of thirty thousand dollars. What you actually did for him is you got him one hundred eighty. That's right. You got him one hundred eighty thousand dollars that he borrowed. He needed 150 and he paid about 30% in interest, but you gave that to him as well. Yes. Brilliant. See, the whole thing is is structuring the model. So when investors come to the to our office and say, "Okay, I'm going to buy this." The whole point is is structuring it in a way that we know they're covered completely from start to finish so that there aren't any glitches. Yeah. The important part is to know that the money that they're asking for is enough, right? Are the costs in line? Yeah. And and you know, what are the costs of servicing the mortgage and are you going to run into it? So we take a look at all of those factors and we put it into play. Yeah. So we'll structure it in a way that he can borrow. Now, in this case, with Andrew's deal, yeah. he had another property that had equity into it, uh, in it as well. But so not a lot. I mean, no, how much? $50,000. $50,000. That's it. He had another property yeah. that had $50,000 sitting in it. So, so somebody not as smart as Rav, uh, so we won't use me. I mean, n smarter than Rav, rather, so we won't use me. Somebody <laughs> else who's smarter than me. He said, okay, that guy's got 50 grand in that property, mm -hmm. but more so he knew what he was doing, mm -hmm. this other guy that was lending, he said, oh, that's gonna work. He's buying near Western Ontario, um, he's going to put an addition. There's going to be, you know, well, many how, more how things. Well, how it works is this: we'll structure the deal, yeah, and then uh, we'll approve it, yeah, and then we send it out to our investors. So we have a list of people that have expressed interest in lending their money, yeah. So what we do is we'll put it out there, and it's a first come, first serve basis. So we had, I think, three different investors that cobbled the money together, and yeah. each of them put in some money for this mortgage, yeah. and then it goes to we draft all the paperwork. It goes to the lawyer. We close the deal, and then 
the proceeds, so the additional money that he needed for the renovations, we actually hold it in a trust account that we have. Yeah. And as the work is completed, we release the money. Which makes the investor feel good. That yeah. You're, it's that it's going to control. Carmen, I mean, going to ProFunds in a trust account yes. rather than all going to to Andrew as he drives by uh, Falls View Casino. Yeah, uh, so if anyone does the math, it was over 100% of his purchase price. Yeah. Way over 100%. Yeah. But we lend, okay, so we'll lend, you know, in most cases, 85% on the as-is value, and then 85% on the completed value. The, the, the 400 plus. Yes. So he bought it at 200,000. Yes. And the completed value appraised was, was going to be over four hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. So you lent him. You felt comfortable lending him eighty-five percent of the four twenty-five. Right, and then we also did additional security on the other property. Yeah. So when you do all the numbers together, it, it worked out in the eighty-five percent range, maybe a little higher. But we had a relationship, obviously, and that's another thing about relationships in this business. Yeah. You have loyalty and relationships. Uh, you you. You get to know your clients and you know how they operate and you're a little bit more lenient with certain things because you know they're good for what they're doing, right? Yeah, it's yeah. a relationship building business. It's very important. Yeah, I mean, and I think it's important for people to know, Carmen. I mean, you as a teenager, I don't know, 17, 18 years old, you cleared a hundred grand on your one of your yeah. first properties that you did, kind of like Andrew. I mean, he's in his, what, early 20s. Yeah. Um, you were in your late teens. And yeah. you did the exact same thing and cleared over $100,000. Yeah. And so this is stuff that happens over and over. It's not like you got lucky. I mean, have you ever lost? In, I've never lost in real estate investing, uh, ever. I've never lost. Have a, I? I have. You've lost in oh, real yeah, estate investing? Oh, yeah, for sure. And, and I think the key is with real estate investing is that it's your management is the key. So. Yeah. Um, but tell I, mean, I think it's great to disclose that. Yeah. How did you lose? Was it because you you, you I was I was uh, you lent to somebody? To, no, I, I had real estate and someone was managing the pro, their portfolio Got it. and absconded with all the money for the renovations. So that's not Carmen's fault. That was no. a, that was a, a, a trust maybe maybe giving too much trust. Yeah. So it's kind of like in um, my my favorite movie. It's a movies. painful painful loss, let me tell you, because a lot of money. But, but you, you had a great product. Somebody else was managing it for you, yeah. and they, they, they cheated you is what they you really saying. Oh, yeah. Okay. That was a big fraud. But, I mean, that happens, so people have to know that when they're getting into real estate, managing, it doesn't matter what business you're in, is the key yeah. to everything. Like, the way Andrew managed this process yeah. was remarkable. Like, he went in, he went in, he worked it, he was there, he literally slept there. Yeah. He, he managed the process from start to finish. That's why it was such a great success. So yeah. if you have involvement in managing anything you do, it's, yeah. it'll be successful because sure. you're in control, right? But as soon as you let it go too much, then that's when the problems arise. And the, the person who lent him or the people that lent him this money, um, again, it was within a kind of a, a pool of investors that you knew, you sent it out. So if somebody's watching the show and they want to get, you know, hey, I'm an investor, I want to lend out that kind of money mm -hmm. and make those kind of returns, what, what do we do? We just, we just So call. what they can do is they'll contact our, our office. They can go to our website at profunds.ca. Yeah. Make sure .ca because there's a .com in the U.S., so don't get confused with them. Yeah. But profunds.ca, we have an online um, app that you can go in and just put your name and email and contact information. You will already you'll be put into the mailing list. So as soon as you're added to the mailing list, you will receive any opportunities that come in mortgage investments. We don't send out, uh, you know, sales gimmicks or anything like that. It's strictly a network in our in our company where you can receive all the opportunities that we have, whether yeah. they're individual small mortgages. Yeah or big projects. So well, tell me mm -hmm. a, a project that you did lately. Car Carmen herself, I mean, you just you just bought something like a, yeah. a beachfront cottage type yeah, thing. Yeah, now yeah. is that, can we call that an investment? Or, sure, or, okay. yeah. No, no, I'm just asking. I didn't know if you're, you wanted a second cottage. Well, that's kind of the, see, that's the, that's the problem with me. That's my hobby yeah. on the side as well. Yeah. So yeah, I've uh, just acquired, we just closed actually last week yeah. and went to the cottage. So it's up in uh, on uh, Lake Huron yeah. um, near Port Elgin and up in that pocket. But again, north. but you live here, you live in Burlington. Mm -hmm. So how did you find this property? Well, I have a cottage up there already. So okay. it's in a place called Oliphant. It's a little tiny place and it's very private and quiet. But yeah. there was this little, little tiny shack right on the water available and we waited all summer and it was still sitting there so we put an offer in on it and we got it we closed and then when we went to, into the house i guess it was it's a hundred and i don't know how many years old and the children left everything in there that belonged to the parents yeah holy smokes and i'm an antique 
lover. Yeah. I love doing garage sales and antique shopping and all that. Yeah. That's my yeah. other passion. Better you than me. Oh yeah. my gosh, well, I love yeah. it. I could dig through stuff. Oh, I love it. So I found all kinds of neat treasures in the in the cottage on the weekend. But what our plan is to is to tear that down and build a beach house. Yeah. Because the area is just up and coming in a tremendous way. So we'll we'll be able to get that place with maybe four hundred thousand, we paid two forty. Okay, so no, no, let's look at that for a second. So you you paid two forty for it, mm -hmm. and we're going to tear it down. We're going to tear it down, and then we're going to we're going to put about four hundred into it. Four hundred, but not thousand, but not out of your own pocket. No, we'll we'll borrow that. I borrow private money all the time for but all my you, projects. So when you bought this for two forty, yes. how much did you put down? I put I put twenty percent down on this. We put twenty percent down on a two forty, so you put forty eight thousand dollars down. Yeah, and then you're going to borrow four hundred thousand dollars. That's right. And you'll pay probably what interest on that? Probably twelve and two, so fourteen percent. So twelve percent interest. Yeah, so about maybe monthly. sixty thousand dollars, maybe. Yeah. About sixty thousand, maybe. Yeah, so sixty. So you're in for you know a hundred grand, mm -hmm. and you are gonna that will be worth what? It'll probably be worth about eight seventy five, nine hundred when we're done. Come on. Yeah. Stop it. Yeah. It's gonna be worth nine hundred thousand dollars. Sure. And so you're gonna pay everything back, and you're gonna clear a few hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. Just well, like the that. one there's one just down the street. They did the exact same, just a, a few doors down. Yeah. And that's worth you know eight fifty, eight seventy five. So we're definitely in that realm. Yeah, but you're only in for six fifty. Mm -hmm. Two forty and four hundred is six forty. Yeah. And you're saying you're going to sell it for nine, so you're, you're going to clear, you know, uh, a couple hundred thousand dollars. Even if it's a hundred and fifty, I'd be happy. Yeah. So, and yeah. how long would that whole process take? Well, because it's up north, it'll take a little bit longer. Yeah. And I'm not sure. But within a year. In a year, one year. One year. Mm -hmm. So this, you'll just make a hundred, hundred and fifty thousand dollars in one year, mm -hmm. just on the side, just doing this. Yeah. This is what you do. Mm -hmm. Wow. I love it. And you do this, and like I said, you've been doing this, um, you know, for for over two decades. You've been you've been mm -hmm. cranking this. Uh, yeah. There's always something happening in the in the smaller side, and then we have our large projects too that the company does. Yeah, so. I know. That's what I'm saying. These are yeah. just side projects. Then yeah. you have your your business. We haven't talked about all the big commercial you know, kind of master plan kind of stuff that you're yeah. doing. That's going to be in a few weeks when you come on again and talk about um, syndicate mortgages and, yeah. you know, all that kind of stuff. So, but this is just something, things. this is just something that you did last but, week. Yeah. And this is, again, I borrow, I don't ask for discounts from my investors because I'm in the business. I pay fair market for what the money is yeah. and um, I borrow it all the time yeah. for any of our projects we do. I never go to the institutions because they take too long and there's too much red tape. And this is so you're going to borrow four hundred thousand mm -hmm. dollars to turn this into a masterpiece and sell it for nine hundred, mm -hmm. which you know you can because you know the area. Mm -hmm. And you're going to pay what percent on that four hundred thousand? You said about fifteen. It'll be no twelve percent interest. Yeah. Plus a two percent lender fee. To plus the, a two percent lender fee. So about fourteen percent altogether. Mm -hmm. You're going to pay about fifty, sixty thousand uh, dollars just to borrow the money, but you're making. A couple hundred thousand yeah. dollars. And so this it's is great kind of for the do. people that are lending. Yeah. And it's great for the people that want to invest. So, yeah. you know, for those that think, oh, I don't have any cash, I can't do this, you got to think out of the box. So, so many people are so concerned about, and I was mentioning this earlier, yeah. the interest rates being so low, we've been spoiled with that. But don't let that hinder your abilities to go out there and, and do it. Because if you think about the big picture, and you, so what if you make, if it, it costs you an extra 50000 if you can make another hundred and fifty. So what? You wouldn't be able to do it otherwise. Yeah. You know, you just simply wouldn't be able to do yeah, it. Yeah, no, no. It's a, it's, a faith, it's a faith move because it's really putting money out there and knowing, mm -hmm. you know, that it's, we don't look at it. You know, I think a mutual friend of ours, Michael Saracini, always says, don't look at how much it costs you. That's the wrong word, how much it costs. Yeah. It's an investment. Yeah. You're investing. Look at the return on investment, right? Just like Andrew. Exactly. He's willing to pay, you know, the money. Uh, well, he technically didn't pay any money, but... Generally speaking, he's he's willing to do that because he knows he's going to get a great return on his yeah. investment. You're willing to, you know, pay fifty, sixty thousand dollars in interest in one year mm -hmm. because you know you're going to clear hundred, hundred and fifty thousand dollars. You know, if you decide to, uh, if you decide to sell to it. sell it, you could pull money out of it. Well, I was you're reading my mind because yeah. I was just thinking that I said, well, I might just keep it and rent it, yeah. and have a vacation beach house there for a rental because yeah. you could I could rent that for twenty five hundred a, a week, yeah, and then refinance it and use that money then to invest in something else in mortgages, which I love doing because yeah. the returns are great and it's passive, yeah. Or I could find another investment that might pop along that intrigues me, yeah. No, no, so no, no. It's I think. Uh, you're very smart, Carmen. Thank you for uh, being a uh, business colleague, for being a friend. 
Um, time flies. We're pretty much done the show here. When wow. we come back, just kind of your closing thoughts to the, to the viewers at home. Thanks for being here. Okay, well, thank you. It's been great having Carmen on the show. If you've missed it, you want to get the repeat. Uh, we'll be back in just a few mo moments with her closing thoughts. Thanks for watching, everyone. If you have any questions pertaining to this show or if there's a topic that you would like covered, please visit www.rogerstv.com. Expressed in this program are those of the participants personally and do not necessarily reflect those of Rogers, Rogers TV, or of Greybrook Securities, Inc. Please consult a professional investment advisor before making investment decisions. Hey, it's Rav. Welcome back to The Everyday Investor. We've been talking to Carmen Caponero, how to make money, about how to make money, um, investing in mortgages, borrowing money, investing it out there. Carmen, it's, uh, it's been an eye-opener for me. Uh, great show. Love what Andrew did. Love what you just did last week on a cottage. Good luck with that. Yes. Um, if there's anything that you kind of want to share with the viewers at home with this whole concept of lending out money, borrowing money to do other things, mm -hmm. kind of being the bank, all that kind of stuff, uh, what would you say to the viewers at home? I would say just think out of the box and, and step out of your comfort zone. Um, so many people are, you know, we've been all uh, raised with save your money, pay down your mortgage, and you know, have your nine to five job, step out of that comfort zone and do something different because that's where the success lies and that's yeah. where the money can be made. So borrowing on your home, lending it out. So what if you have a mortgage, you're going to leverage the bank's money um, and, and take that leap of faith and, and do those investments and just make sure you're managing everything properly. But there's money to be had, made, and also to borrow and go for it. Don't stop. Yeah, and, and I think it's not, I mean, you know, step outside of the box, be, do, do, do something different. There's many people that are doing it, such as yourself, such as Andrew. I mean, this is what we do. Um, it's, it's not like, hey, do something that no one's doing. No. It's this niche, niche oh, of there's investors. There's so many people that are so worried, you yeah, know, yeah. about, you know, and maybe that type of investing isn't for them, yeah. but I'm just saying I meet regularly people from the show. Right? Yeah. We have a lot of clients coming from, from this TV show. And so many of them are so concerned and worried. So even start little baby steps. But yeah. try it once you get a taste for it, you're gonna love it. It's incredible. Yeah, absolutely. I mean don't don't uh, fall away of fear. Have knowledge. Get knowledge. Yeah. Um, you know, watch great shows like the everyday yes. investor. Um, but uh, knowledge really mitigates risk. Yeah. And, you know, uh, Carmen, thank you so much for uh, being on the show. Look forward to having you back in a few weeks oh, when yes. we talk about syndicate mortgages. That's awesome. going to be a lot of fun. It's a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you so thank much you. for, for okay. being here. Uh, on behalf of uh, Rogers TV and myself, uh, Rav Tour, we'll see you next week. Same place, same time. Honey, I love you. I'll be home soon. Thanks for watching, everyone. Ciao.